protect and facilitate the public health, safety, morals, and general welfare, and to prevent loss of health, life, or property from fire, flood, panic, or other danger. The health objective of these ordinances seeks, and I quote, to improve the health of the residents of Luzerne County by controlling pollution to the lowest level which is economically feasible. Our testimony and supporting evidence will show that permitting UGIES's request would contravene the purposes and objectives which you are to uphold. First, the health impacts. Our home is a closely populated community. It's a mere mile and a half, and, and probably less from the description now that Mr. Monaghan has given, downwind from the proposed site, which according to Lillian Harris, UGIES spokesperson, is projected to spew out 44.3 tons of carcinogenic VOCs and 16.2 tons of hazardous air pollution, <coughs> including benzene, toluene, nitrous oxide, and formaldehyde annually. Today, they did decrease some of those figures, but as many people have said, you know, who wants to live within a, in a zone that has 50% of the federal limit of nitrous oxides from just one source of pollution? And I hand you, I'm afraid I only have one copy, exhibit one of that particular statistic. This, together with the aggregate sources of pollution, the inver inversion naturally occurring in our valley, and the blowdown and fugitive emissions not considered in that figure, may cause us to quickly exceed the federal limit of 50 tons of carcinogenic gases annually. These stations perform blowdowns. Mr. Morrow referred to them. He did not tell us how many of them would be, be performed annually. These blowdowns release concentrated quantities of these hazardous airborne chemicals. In addition, everywhere there is a valve in this station, uh, every valve will produce fugitive emissions. The manufacturers of these valves state the degree of emissions that each valve produces. And remember, these figures are not part of, uh, of, of the figures that were quoted here tonight. Dangerous levels of ground ozone are reached when the VOCs and nitrous oxides produced by this type of industrial complex react in the presence of sunlight. Both the EPA and the AHA have linked ground ozone to respiratory and heart disease, uh, Exhibit 2. The DEP began issuing ozone reports for Wilkes-Barre uh, on August 1st this year because we are currently mildly non-compliant, Exhibit 3. The Times Tribune article from July 2012 also expounds on the effects of excessive ground ozone produced by compressor stations in Pennsylvania, Exhibit 4. The Luzerne County Planning Commission, by whom you are employed, produces the Air Quality Conformity and Analysis Report, and that's Exhibit 5. Can I just stop you for one second? I just want to make clear. Yes. We're not employed. They're not employed by Luzerne. No. Are they, not, are they not guided at all by the Planning no, Commission, no, zoning, no, planning? No, no, not no. a bit. OK. Well, well, hopefully, independent. independent. Uh, in any event, uh, it is Luzerne County, uh, and, and this is a planning proposal. And this no, document it says, zoning, OK, says, and I quote, that the Planning Commission must consider the impacts of transportation on the ozone level and other pollutants, and how these levels affect the air quality in the MPO region. This document confirms, and I quote, that higher ozone concentrations are associated with warmer temperatures, high pressure systems involving temperature inversions, and low wind speeds. Under these stagnant conditions, emissions and ozone tend to accumulate rather than disperse. Increases in nitrous oxide, and we've been told there will be, will lead to an increase in ozone. Reductions in nitrous oxide emissions may achieve regional ozone reductions, says this report. On the other hand, it says reductions in VOCs are often most important 
for local ozone reduction. And we're not getting reductions, we're getting increases if you allow this. Allowing this proposed station to significantly diminish air quality in an already mildly non-compliant area is totally incompatible with the Luzerne County Planning Commission's emission control <coughs> strategies. In a TIP memorandum, Adrian Moroli, Executive Director of the Luzerne County Planning Commission, <coughs> confirms that the Luzerne Lackawanna MPO region is currently designated as a marginal non attainment area, Exhibit 6. If the Zoning Hearing Board were to grant UGIS this exception, it would be in direct violation of Luzerne County Planning Commission's policy to reduce emissions as stated in the report and memorandum above. Remember, the emissions that which UGIES themselves guarantee from this plant will far exceed all traffic emissions in our area. Remember also, gas and oil drilling companies are exempt from important provisions of the Clean Air Act, which the Planning Commission must observe. The three compression engines proposed by UGIES will emit the equivalent of 71 city bus emissions 24-7 and precedent proves that gas companies often add more engines to compressor stations, and I refer to here to information from Pennsylvania Clean Air Council. Since 2008, Act 124 prohibits large diesel trucks from idling for more than five minutes, and that's Exhibit 7. Therefore, it is unacceptable that the equivalent of 71 such engines should operate full a mile from my community. Pennsylvania Acts 35 and 36 mandate that all school districts post notices regarding pesticide and herbicide <coughs> use 72 hours prior to application and for two days following. Since children breathe a greater volume of air and thus airborne pollutants relative to their body size, the integrated pest management plans of all Pennsylvania schools require that parents are notified of pesticide use. They may then freely choose to reduce their child's risk. If you permit this installation, you remove the rights of parents to protect their children's health. And that is Exhibit 8. Since 1981, Wilma Subra, a MacArthur Genius Award-winning chemist, has run Subra Company, a chemistry lab and environmental consulting firm, which performs extensive, objective testing, surveying, and data analysis at oil and gas drilling sites and related installations. Uh, please find attached a document from her <coughs> company which details the danger to us community members from installations identical to that proposed. This company's findings assert with evidence that 75% of residents within a two mile radius of compressor stations experience acute and chronic health effects including liver, kidney, and nervous system damage, a host of cancers, and diminished home values. This would be the fate of all of West Wyoming and parts of Kingston Township should you permit this travesty to occur. At a meeting held on Wednesday, August 1st, UGIES Director of Operations Mike Morris said he could not assure local residents that his company would not add more compressors and therefore more pollution. When asked by a local resident if he would consider running the compressors on electricity to reduce hazardous emissions, Mara declined, saying this would not be cost effective for UGIES. UGIES's profits must not be accrued by the sacrifice of our health and the health of our communities. UGIES and other gas companies must adopt cleaner technologies if they petition to locate this close to human populations. Your denial of their request for a special exception will send them this clear message. The proposed context is decidedly an industrial use, which is defined as a structure or use intended or used for manufacturing, processing, which I believe is what's happening here, repairing or compounding, or for the storage or wholesale distribution of goods. And this is distribution of gas. Remember that you are denying or granting a use permit, not a plan permit. What UGIES is disclosing in its current plans is unlikely to match the ultimate outcome. Compressor stations often add infrastructure. Exhibit 12. <coughs> 
UGIES's representatives admitted at Wednesday's meeting that this was phase one of their plan. Phase two will follow only if you allow it. UGIES and Mr. Moroli dishonestly claim that the proposed location is remote. My community is within 1.3 miles as air travels from this facility. We understand that UGIES needs this infrastructure, but it must not be permitted near the, the 2,723 residents of West Wyoming, the, the 5,057 residents of Sawyersville, the 5,648 residents of Exeter, and the 3,071 residents of Wyoming, the affected residents in Kingston Township, and the many visitors to Francis Slocum State, State Park. Uh, residents of Exeter and Wyoming boroughs are subject to the prevailing wind from this mountain which blows west right down on top of them. Granting this permit would violate the regional comprehensive land use plan for this area, which is zoned as an A1 agricultural district. It would constitute use of property for a purpose not authorized within this zone. Clearly, UGIES's plans are for heavy industrial use which is totally incompatible with the zoning and character of our populated municipality. Please consider your duty to promote re measures which preserve or improve the quality of life, public health, safety, and general welfare of the communities within your purview. No one denies that natural gas is a comparatively clean fuel. No one denies that employment generated by the gas drilling industry is a boon, but actually, according to one of UGIES spokespeople tonight, for us that would consist of two permanent people and occasional supplementary contractors, so uh, there's not even an employment boon in this situation. No one denies that reducing our dependence on foreign oil is desirable, however, the safety technology has not kept pace with the extraction and processing technology. Until the gas companies can extract, process, store, and transport gas without generating significant quantities of carcinogenic chemicals and hazardous pollutants, their infrastructures must be kept away from human populations. In addition, the state regulatory program lacks the personnel to monitor and enforce existing regulations. Most of Pennsylvania's field staff is engaged in reviewing the vast number of permits that come across their desks. UGIES officials who compare a 6,000 plus horsepower compressor engine to a domestic air compressor as an analogy to help citizens understand the nature of a gas compressor are certainly not invested in implementing regulations that are currently under monitored. Mm -hmm. Lastly, we invoke Section 17 in Article 1 of our state constitution. Yes. And I quote, the people have a right to clean air, pure, pure water, water, and to the preservation of the natural, scenic, historic, and aesthetic values of the environment. Pennsylvania's public natural resources are the common property of all the people, including generations yet to come. As trustee of these resources, the Commonwealth shall conserve and maintain them for the benefit of all the people. You three men are tasked with the responsibility of maintaining our quality of life and our real estate values, both of which diminish in neighborhoods where such installations are placed. Hence the need to place them in truly uninhabited areas. We urge you to follow the lead of the Dallas Township Zoning Board, who denied a similar exception permit. We urge you to join with our Borough Council Chairperson, Eileen Cipriani, a Wilkes-Barre County Council, and Representative Phyllis Mundy in opposing this endeavor. Please consider our health, the value of our property, and the character of the municipality in making your decision. Thank you.